In 2014, Secret Service approached me in Washington, D.C., and I had to explain to them that I wasn't crazy for talking about telepathy and brain devices like this hat so they wouldn't take me to jail. And mind you, at the time, I was a fully-fledged active-duty medical doctor and U.S. Navy lieutenant working at Walter Reed, one of the most prestigious hospitals in the country. I was working with some research scientists who were studying how PTSD and traumatic brain injury presents itself in combat veterans by using using a very interesting machine that measures magnetic waves coming from the brain through a technique called magnetoencephalography. This is right around the time when I decided to start talking about this fascinating area of neuroscience research on YouTube. Now, I didn't have a filming studio yet, so I went down to the White House South Lawn area to film a little video that I could share on YouTube about the topic. Now, the lawn area is generally open to the public, so I didn't see any issues with it, and I proceeded to film my video. So I set up the tripod. You can see the Washington Monument in the background. I'm talking all excitedly about how there's this super cool device that uses cryogenically cooled superconductor sensor coils to measure the tiny magnetic waves that come from your brain and how it could potentially read your thoughts without ever even physically putting a sensor on your head much like the telepathy of science fiction. So after filming for about half an hour on the ellipse lawn area, I'm breaking down my tripod, putting my gear away, and I see these two people coming towards me on bikes. There's this man and woman in tan uniforms who have gun holsters, and they come up, get off their bikes, and bluntly ask, what, what are you doing? And I was just taken aback and I was looking at them and initially I'm like, okay, they're police officers. So I say, I'm, I'm sorry, I thought this was a public area. They said, yeah, it is. It's okay to be here, but we heard some weird things that you were saying and we just wanted to make sure that everything was okay. So suddenly I realized that they had been listening to me talk about all this crazy sounding content like magnetic waves coming from the brain and reading your thoughts. I'm like, oh my God, Gosh, you guys probably think I'm schizophrenic or something. I know what that probably sounded like. I'm a medical doctor. I work up near NIH and I work on brain imaging with veterans. And then they just laughed and said, oh man, I thought we were gonna need to take you in for questioning. We're actually secret service. And as you can imagine, we like to know what's going on in this area for White House security. Just be careful around here. We're glad you came and visited and thank you for your service. But uh, it's time to wrap up here. So I kind of just sheepishly gathered my gear and walked away. So funny story about uh, filming in Washington, D.C. I did just get visited by a Secret Service. I guess once they realized that I wasn't psychotic when I was uh, talking about the brain admitting magnetic waves. Honestly, they asked me where I was from. We talked a little bit. They were very nice, but I realized in that moment that what I need to do with my career moving forward is continue making videos that will help people understand that explain the incredible advances that are being made in physics, technology, and interface with the human brain to make it more a part of the everyday conversation to where it isn't so weird to talk about it and we can advance the field to the point at which we have valuable diagnostic capabilities for mental health as well as science fiction concepts like projecting thoughts and controlling external devices with your mind, that I think should become a reality and we should be able to do things like the telepathy of science fiction. Telepathy is defined as showing the ability to know what is in someone else's mind with their consent and to communicate mentally without using words or other physical signals. And the question I ask, is this truly possible with the technology that we have now? I think the knowledge of these concepts is incredibly valuable. And if you know the underlying principles, you can prepare for the BCI industry that it's blossoming right now, plan to make investments, create companies, and take advantage of the products that are coming out right now on Brain Computer Interface. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how magnetoencephalography machines work to understand the physics and the underpinnings behind the technology. Then we're gonna take a look at how AI is using make data to create language model systems for thought projection. Then we're gonna take a look at how magnetism is being used in current devices like this hat from Fluxware to treat symptoms like anxiety, depression, and chronic pain. Looking back on this incident with the Secret Service is funny because I think the technology has improved dramatically even since I made that video eight years ago. People probably thought I was crazy for talking about this stuff back then, but really it's becoming more and more a part of the everyday conversation of where we're going as a human species, especially with the improved material science 
and increasing power of AI and big data analytics. So backing up a bit and diving into the science behind this technology, when neurons fire, they create an electrical discharge down the path of an axon with a resultant tangential magnetic wave. There's a voltage change on the scalp that's relatively easy to detect with sensors from EEG, but it's hard to localize where exactly the electrical discharge is coming from because the signal gets distorted by the skull and cerebral spinal fluid that surrounds the brain. The magnetic waves are more difficult to detect, but they don't get distorted by the CSF or the skull nearly as much. This results in better data that can be used in AI pipelines to improve brain-computer interface applications like thought-to-speech generators, as we'll see in some meta-AI research in this video shortly. One of the main challenges of this technique is interference from the Earth's magnetic field, electronic appliances, and even cars driving by the laboratory. To get the best signal, you need to be in a magnetic shielded room that uses different layers of metal and even large nulling coils that are installed in the walls and the device itself to reverse magnetic fields that cancel out the fields that are not coming from the brain to get a better signal of the fields that are coming from the brain. The original system used these super cooled coils called squids that are lowered to negative 516 degrees Fahrenheit from cryogenic helium. That's almost absolute zero on the Kelvin scale. They then have to be thermally insulated within a vacuum, so you need a hard shell around the sensors. This fixed array makes it so that the distances between the person's scalp and the sensors is variable based on head size. Also, there can be distortions of the signal whenever people move their head, even by just mere centimeters. So number one, there's variable distances. Number two, there's not a good fit. Number three, they're prone to movement artifacts. And number four, it needs expensive cryogenic liquid refills on a biweekly basis. So overall, it would be better if the sensors were as close to the scalp as possible since the magnetic signal decays quickly with any small distance. What's really exciting is that there's been the development of a new MEG system called Optically Pumped MEG that can use rubidium filled chambers about the size of a Lego. Basically, there's a laser that magnetizes the atomic vapor within the little MEG cells. And when that magnetized atomic vapor gets shifted by any magnetic waves coming from the brain, it changes the amount of light that's getting through the chamber to a sensor on the other side. Changes in the amount of light hitting the sensor are used to quantify the amplitude and the frequency of the magnetic fields coming from the brain during mental tasks. If you surround the brain with these sensors, you get a great map of global brain activity with much better spatial resolution than EEG. As a result, the new OpMeg system has higher sensitivity, better spatial resolution, and more uniform coverage with lower system complexity and free movement of participants during the experiment. Researchers are working on different ways to cancel out the effect of the Earth's magnetic field so that these OpMeg wearables are much more effective outside of heavy and expensive shielded rooms. There could be a combination of materials, nulling coils, and AI analysis of signal contamination that would help a lot. Kernel was successful in reducing requirements from this intimidating chamber that blocked out all the Earth's magnetic fields to a much less expensive room with a walk-around hallway that's easy for humans to enter but significantly cancels out the magnetic fields from the room. OpMeg has proved to be more accurate than EEG when trying to get data for AI language algorithms. Even Meta AI, the research arm that grew out of Facebook, is getting into the mix. They found that language projection capabilities of EEG was only 19.1%, whereas Meg was closing in at 72.5% accuracy of predicting what a person was thinking about and translating that into speech text. This is in relation to studies done recently at the University of Austin, with fMRI closing in on 85% accuracy of decoding what a person was listening to on a podcast simply from their brain signals alone. Companies like Kernel have been well aware of these capabilities, and they originally had developed the Kernel Flow and the Kernel Flux, and in 2021, they shocked the neuroscience community by showing that they could use the Kernel Flux OpMeg system to identify what song a person was listening to out of a set of 10. 
However, unfortunately, they had to discontinue the Colonel Flux due to needing a magnetically shielded room to get the best results, which they felt would limit mainstream adoption until researchers can better figure out how to null out the Earth's magnetic field without use of a walk-in chamber. So the magnetism that comes from the brain has fantastic potential. We need to figure out how to better shield the device to take full advantage of its capabilities. Now, switching to magnetic stimulation of the brain, by now most people know that you can use external magnetic pulses to actually affect the discharge patterns of a neuron rather than just measuring them like with the OpMeg technique. And it has largely started a medical revolution of what brain treatments are happening right now in the medical industry. With the strong enough magnetic pulse of 1.5 to 2 Tesla, you can cause neurons to activate their action potentials. I actually tested this out in a clinic where they put a magnetic arm over my motor cortex and caused my thumb to move by stimulating that area with magnetic pulses. These pulses can be used to stimulate an area of the brain called the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex that's known to be underactive in a certain type of depression. Stimulating the DLPC has been shown to help with mood regulation by influencing other areas that it's connected with to include the amygdala fear center and the emotional control limbic system. Oddly enough, there are effects from even small magnetic currents as well. Even at 1 100th of the strength of TMS discharges, researchers are finding that bioelectrical effects go down to the cellular level. One such mechanism is called pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, or PEMF, and is a hotly debated field of bioelectromagnetics. Although this area has rightly been looked at with proper skepticism, I think it's worth taking a look at because more and more of these devices are undergoing regulatory review and clearance by the FDA, and they are accumulating treatment evidence, and the anecdotal experiences are pretty convincing. NeoRhythm is one such PEMF device that I've reviewed on this channel in the past. Since then, they've had hundreds of client testimonials on the benefits that they've experienced from treatment of anxiety symptoms to chronic pain. In fact, Neorhythm's parent company, Omnipemph, seems to be orienting towards a higher focus of chronic pain treatments with pads to help improve circulation and reduce inflammation in areas of chronic pain that are very difficult to treat with traditional methods. This PEMF tech is also now being fit into wearables like hats, like this one. This is Shift created by Cameron and Nadia Ansari, who I interviewed at CES in 2022. And now it's coming to market and it's really fun to try. It seems to have a slight but very firm effect on the brain. It definitely relaxes me when I wear it. Cameron has a number of different patents on this hat, which is really neat. There's a bunch of different coils embedded within the material itself. And when he was trying to look for solutions to Nadia's Guillain-Barre chronic pain, he saw quite a bit of material on the internet, including my Neorhythm video, that inspired him to create this hat, which makes me feel really good about the content that I've been publishing here on the channel. Cameron used the PEMF in this hat to help treat the chronic pain and anxiety that his sister Nadia was experiencing from Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is a really rough autoimmune disease that damages the peripheral nervous system. His sister is now a freshman at Stanford, and they're company was featured in the Stanford Daily. So Cameron and Nadia, congratulations. To me, it's just amazing that we can measure magnetism and use it to actually legitimately read people's thoughts these days, but also use that energy to promote healing on the cellular level. So now we've come full circle after 10 years and when I made that original video and the secret service agents approached me, and I'm happy to say that this stuff is no longer science fiction. We're going to see big advances over the next couple of years in using magnetism to study the brain. If you want to see a comparison of the shift hat to neorhythm, take a look at this video and I'll see you on the other side.